Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Um, I thought I'd do a bit of a video on the five things that I love about this car. Um, today, the weather's a bit, is a bit naff to be fair. It's very, very rainy. There's a lot of wind, so I'm not sure if I'm going to get too much of outside footage. Hopefully, the weather does die down a bit, but um, we shall, we shall see. So the first um, item I'd say that I love about this car is the exterior. So. I'd say maybe to some it's a bit of a Marmite situation. You know, some people love the design of Mini, some people don't. Um, but I, I, I like the quirkiness of the car. I think, you know, the front big headlights and the rear, you know, the shape of it is all very iconic. It still backdates to the, the 60s when British Leyland were making the, the original uh, Austin Minis. Um, and it's that same sort of shape and design is carried over. So we've got the things like the uh, the, the wind mirrors, for example. They've still kept that oval shape. Um, we've still got the big round headlights at the front. We've got the round headlight, uh, the this sort of rectangular uh, tail lights at the back as well. Um, the ground clearance as well is always sort of relatively kept the same. Um, and we've still got that sort of squarish design inside the cabin um, as well. Um, so I'd say, love it or hate it, it's one of those types of things. I'd say for me personally, I love the big tailpipes at the back, um, whether it being a JCW they're an, or an S, for example, they, they both have the taillights, the, the exhaust tips in the middle. Um, as opposed to a Cooper that usually just has it on the side. So, and I think it really sort of, it really works with the back end. And I think the JCWs get a slightly different back end. They get a slightly better front end as well. There's a man that's just cycled past me. Good day. Um, but it looks more aggressive with the JCWs. The Cooper LSs look good. The main distinction of it is you can tell it's a JCW because they have vents on the front as opposed to fog lights. Um, I'll try and get a picture of it up now. Um, but yeah, I think the, the, the actual aggression of this car really makes it look good. Um, and which is, a, is one of the reasons that I love it. So the second reason why I love this car is the interior and its spec. So I'll give a bit of an overview of the interior. So minis have always had this sort of retro styling going on with everything round, essentially. So obviously steering wheel is around um but then the, they also carried on the center screen the center dial so this sort of dates back to the original minis so the original minis used to have their speeders in the middle when bmw took over the brand um with the and made the r53 the r53 had a big speedo in the middle of it um with various different variations depending on what type of cooper you got um, the R56 then carried over the Speedo in the middle. Um, but when it came to the F56, which is what this version is, and even the LCI models, they thought, well, it is good having the speed dial in the middle, but for driver focus, you want it in the middle, like in your direct view. So they did change it up. Um, and they replaced it with, with, well, with this one, it's got the ProNav system in it. So... If you didn't, uh, if you didn't spec that, you would just get like a normal sort of weird radio looking thing. It didn't look that great. Um, the next step up is obviously the nav. The nav, well, the nav screen doesn't always have the nav in it, which is a bit weird, but it is a slightly smaller screen than if you get the pro nav, you get the, the larger screen. And I love that about this car. I love the spec of this car. The seats themselves are very hugging. This is the mini yours lounge leather seats i believe um with the black on black you can get them in variations the 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 saddle brown with the white piping is just oh chef's kiss um but other than that like the seats are very comfortable they're very good for long journeys um i also love the fact that this car did come very well specced when i did buy it um i was very fortunate in that area so this car has Harman Kardon all around. The stereo system is magnifique. Um, it's also got LED lighting throughout the cabin. This, again, was another optional extra. Like I said, the ProNav, I've got that screen in there as well. I've got heated seats, um, which with most BMW products, you 
they're very rare to find sometimes you have to spend the money to get them so that's very fortunate and it's also got a dual zone active climate climate control as well which to be fair i wasn't too bothered about normal sort of ac but the fact that i can have 20 degrees on this side and 18 degrees on that side um it's really helpful it also has for some reason an auto park function so if i was to park up um if i was to get to if i found like a space was quite tight when doing a parallel park this thing nine out of ten oh i'd say about seven out of ten times will detect that space and then if you wanted to you can put it into that mode and it will park itself i find that it does take a while to do but it, you know if you are struggling or you are one of those types of people that don't like the parallel park it is very useful the thing that i do love is the heads up display um i love i've never had a car with heads up display but now i've had one i don't think i could ever go back when you start up the car it's very there's a bit of drama to it so it's like a little mini comes up on the screen it winks at you and then all of a sudden everything just the heads up display just raises the screen turns on as well and it's like it's like everything's just there it's like your control panel and everything everything just works very very well the interior quality itself is very very nice um before this i had a, a fiesta z tech s that was the mark 7 mark 7.5s um and as much as that had quite a decent interior for for a ford um getting into this was a was a next level ball game um my dad has had mercs he's got a volvo at the moment um and i'd say the quality sort of lives up to that really there are some sort of scratchy plastics here and there but you're gonna get that anyway because it is a cheaper car but you know like i said it's i'm very fortunate that i got the spec that i did um right so the third thing um that i love about this car is the performance on this thing so basically if you buy a manual version of the jcw you'll be looking at a 0 to 60 time of 6.3 seconds they have 230 brake out the box and if you do decide that you want to remap it you can get these up to between sort of 280 and 300 brake if you go for the autos um, you might have a bit of trouble when you come to remap in the car um but i would say you should be fine if if you speak to the right uh, tuning specialist and if you're getting one of them and you don't want to do anything to it and you get it stock then it will be uh 060 in about 6 6.1 something like that to be specific and as soon as you pop this into sport mode ignore the cold in the back they're sloshing about everywhere is as soon as you drop it on and you go pop start to go and then you can really floor it ignore the cocked up gear yeah, but here we are so one of the things that some people maybe have a gripe with is the handling I'd say if you are coming out of a Corsa or a Port, no, no, Corsa or a Ford Fiesta, for example, then you might think it's a bit odd if you come from something a bit normal. Um, oh, what are you doing? Um, anyway, but if you're coming out of something like that, then you probably will think it's a bit weird. But you know, even in its normal mid setting, it's like it's got decent handling. It's a bit light. Um, if you have come out of sport mode, you're going to, you're going to notice it a lot. Um, but yeah, the mid mode's usually the mode that I tend to keep it in. Um, it's the right balance, it's easy to park, etc., which is the boring things. Um, and just pulling it along is very nice, it's very comfortable. If you pop it into green mode, it gets a little bit quieter. I notice when you are at 70 miles an hour, it does burble a little bit, which is quite cool, I'd say. Um, but the good thing about putting it into green mode is it tells you which gear you need to be in um, to save fuel, if you want to save fuel. Um, but it is very limp, I'd say. If you are trying to overtake someone, you are going to have to keep swapping in between modes. But overall, as a package, this car is very good. But if I put it back into sport mode, you feel like everything sort of tensens up. So 
if I sit, I'm going to run around about at the moment, uh, which isn't the best way to test your handle. But hey ho. But it grips, it grips, it grips. It can lose the front. Um, that's probably not helpful with the tune and the tyres that I've got. Um, which is a fact I'll bring up in another video about what I don't like about this type of this car, which is the tyres. If you've still got run flights on, you'll know. Um, it is quite loose. But if you are going to switch to anything, it's a fake JCW. Um, if you are going to switch your tyres, Michelin Pilot Sport 4s are generally the tyre of choice for most people that go through. Um, unfortunately, I'm stuck behind a Peugeot right now. So you can get around them. Peugeot drivers. That which you'd find very surprising is the is the actual economy of this thing. So I've, I'm currently on V Power. I never usually put V Power in just because of the price, but I thought, you know, I've got a bit of extra money. I'll I'll you know I'll, I'll I'll treat the car. I'll treat the car to itself. Um, but since then I've not really done any long distances. I've mainly been going to and from the shops, seeing some friends, seeing the girlfriend, stuff like that. And I've had it mainly mainly in sport mode probably say about 60 70 percent in sport mode and then the rest has been um in normal mid mode um and i'm getting 30.7 miles to the gallon which isn't actually that bad to be considering the performance that you get on tap on a motorway this thing is really really good as well so my my place of work if i was to go into the office um it's about 240 50 mile round trip uh trip there um, and then back again um, I can get down there with three bars to spare which is just shy of a quarter of a tank um, that's obviously start stop traffic and I'll get about I think lowest I've got is probably about 42 mpg which is really really good um, for this kind of car if I was really feathering the throttle I can get up to 48 so there is there is a really good economy with this car um it's a car that can do both i'd say if you want to do your speeding your speedy driving you want to have in sport mode all the time you can the lowest i've ever got in this thing is 24 and people all little mini fanboys in the comments will be like oh you're not driving it hard enough well it just depends isn't it you don't need to you don't need to floor it all the time as much as it is and I'll get onto the next point of why you might want, maybe want to do that. Um, you're still gonna, 
you're still going to have fun in this car. You're still going to get the smiles per miles. Miles per smile. Don't know. Um, but yeah, you're going to get the good MPG. And then the fifth and final thing, and this is the fun part, is the sound. The sound of this thing, well, even stock, it sounds really good. If you get one that's before the PPF filters, the I think that's like mid-2017, that's when they did the facelift, obviously, with the Union Jack lights. Um, that's how you can tell. I'm a bit of a sadder. Um but if you get one before then you're gonna get that noise and that's the noise that you like and as stock the stock does sound good but if you're like me and you want that extra bit of sound you can get a res delete um so people are probably asking me oh well why didn't you go for a proper exhaust system if you love your mini so much and it's like well i could get one but the one that i want is the jcw pro exhaust which means you have the valve switch and if you get a, a 210 challenge which isn't i'd say a proper jcw um but it has that jcw tuning then you do get the pro exhaust as standard with them things um you can buy the jcw pro exhaust which is what i'd like to do however even used they're a grand <laughs> and i don't have i don't have a grand spare for an exhaust and i could finance it Ooh. No, I don't have a grind for it. But the sound that you do want from the Pro Exhaust, and to be fair, which is probably the only reason that you're going to get it, is obviously you want the quietness, but you also want to switch to the loudness as well. And if you're going to keep it in the loudness all the time, then you might as well just get res delete, and it's about 80 to 100 pounds. So you're saving a vast amount. The only downside is your neighbours are going to hate you because you're going to have that loudness every single morning if you get up early in the morning when you start your car sometimes it will surprise you and it doesn't go into the cold start mode and then it really throws you off and it's like what's wrong but everything's fine um but yeah, if, you, if you pay the 80 to 100 pounds you're going to get that loud sound all the time anyway um you know and you're going to save yourself a fortune for other mods that you want to buy <laughs> In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed that video, that short video. Um, I'll try and get another one out later. I'm actually off to Cadwell next week um, at Modified Live. So, so if you are there and you are a fan of the channel, please come up and say hi. Um, if there are any ideas, please share them. Um, in the meantime, a subscribe to the channel would be greatly appreciated. Um, please like and follow. Unfortunately, I have given in to the, to the TikTok idea. Um, so I'm starting to put some stuff out in there. It's the same handle as my Instagram, which is at Josh and Cars. Um, but yeah, until next time, see you then.